Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at yet another one of the changed leaders, and that is Wilfred of Canada. So, the first time that I originally made the leader spot for Wilfred, it's before he had had any changes done to him, so there have been changes both in earlier patches and also in the April patch, so quite a few changes to go over here and talk about with Wilfred, and, you know, see how he stacks up now compared to how he was when he first came out. Also, just letting everyone know, I will be announcing the winners of the new Frontier Pass giveaway that happened right after I won that Civ tournament, so I finally got the payout for it, so now I'm able to do the giveaway. So, that will be happening tomorrow at the start of the Saturday stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I will also be putting out a community post after the Saturday stream that is, you know, just, you know, congratulating the winners. So, if you're not able to make it for the Saturday stream, you can check the post, but if you are able to make it, uh, be sure to come check it out at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I will announce the four winners winners of the new Frontier Pass. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and take a look at what Wilfred Laurier has to offer now in Civilization VI. So his first ability is known as the Last Best West, and this one allows his farm, it allows him to build farms on the Tundra terrains, and after uh, Civil Engineering is unlocked, you can also put them on Tundra Hills. And then the thing here is that in Snow, Tundra Snow Hills, and Tundra Hills, all of your mines will provide plus two production, your lumber mills will provide plus two production, camps give plus two food, and farms give plus two food. And all of these strategic resources on those types of tiles will have double the production of the resource. You can also purchase these tiles for 50% less. Whenever I did the original leader spotlight for this, the only thing, there actually weren't any bonus yields on any of the tiles. So you can see now here that there are quite a bit of bonus yields on the tiles, and this makes up for one of the major weaknesses of Wilfred when he first came out. So when he first came out and you didn't get any additional yields on these things, then being in Tundra was just like being in, you know, grassland, except for worse, because it has a base yield of one food instead of two, so it was just like a crappier version of settling in the tundra, uh, in the grassland over the plains, but now with these additional yields, that kind of mitigates this, because with the extra food on the camps, it will be as good as grassland, and the production also helps as well. I don't believe it's always quite the same as grassland hills, but... Um, I might be wrong on that, I'm sure someone will fact check me in the comment section, but this makes it so that now, not only is it just, you know, like, slightly better to be in the tundra, it is as good as settling outside of the tundra, which makes this so much better for Wilfred, because having those terrible yields before was honestly just, it was just garbage, <laughs> but uh, these additional yields make him much better, and you'll have a much better time in the tundra. If you're able to get St. Basil's as well, then you'll have a really good time in the tundra in the city that you built it in, so uh, these new yields are much appreciated. Canada's second ability, Four Faces of Peace, has not changed since I did the initial leader spotlight, so what uh, is happening here is that you cannot declare war on city-states or any surprise wars, but surprise wars can also not be declared on you. For every 100 tourism you generate, then you will generate one diplomatic favor per turn, and you also get double diplomatic favor from, a, uh, from completing a emergency or scored competition. So this ability is very good for diplomatic victory just because being able to get diplomatic favor from tourism is something that uh, Canada is very happy to have because of the fact that we have the Mountie that we'll talk about just in a little bit here. Uh, so this just kind of makes him a very good diplomatic civ, and as I mentioned, this ability hasn't been changed, so I won't talk about it too much more. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the Mountie, which is Canada's unique unit. This is a unique cavalry unit that is unlocked with the Conservation Civic, so this one has a melee strength of 62. Well, I also should mention it doesn't replace anything, so I'm not going to compare it to anything, although it's probably most comparable to a cavalry, but has a melee strength of 62, a movement of 5, and a sight of 4, so they are very mobile and good for scouting, and they are decently strong units as well. One of the changes here is that the production cost of the Mountie was reduced in the last, uh, in the April update so that is one of the uh, that's one of the two changes that has been applied to the mounty which does make it a little better the special abilities of the mounty are that you get five extra combat strength when it, when within two tiles of a national park and those are doubled if you if you are the one who owns the national park so it'll be plus 10 and the thing here is that now you have not only one but two build charges to form a national park so the fact that these are both cheaper in production cost and you get an additional build charge to form a national park makes them ridiculously good for forming national parks. You can spam these things out, and you pretty much have an unlimited amount of national parks. I mean, the the limiting factor in a game that you play as Canada, 100% of the time is just going to be how much land you have, rather than, you know, having to wait for faith or anything. You can buy the Mounties with gold, just produce them with production. They're cheaper, they have an additional build charge for the national parks. You can get so much tourism out of them. They are insanely good, and every time that you're playing Canada, you should be using Mounties and forming national parks, because... 
Doing that means that you're going to be able to get a lot of tourism, which then you could either use for a culture victory, or that tourism is going to turn into diplomatic favor as well that you can then use for a diplomatic victory. So the Mounty, ridiculously good unit right now. I mean, not necessarily for combat because it's, I don't know, it's a fine combat unit, but the, Mon the, the National Park part of it is ridiculously strong. Canada's unique tile improvement is known as the Ice Hockey Rink, and this one has not changed at all since I did the original Leader Spotlight, so I'm, just, I'm not really going to talk about it too much, but it gives one amenity, two appeal to surrounding tiles, one culture for each adjacent tundra or snow tile, two food and production at professional sports, and also four culture if adjacent to a stadium, but you can only build one per city. So the Ice Hockey Rink, I think, is a fine tile improvement. The thing that I like to do with it is put it next to the National Parks to help out with the appeal because that two appeal bonus is quite nice. Um, but you can also get some decent culture on these, especially if you put them around an entertainment complex with a stadium. You can get up to 10 culture on one tile, which obviously is pretty good. I think the ice hockey rink is okay. It's just, it comes a little bit later on in the game whenever it's a little bit less useful, but it's still a decent tile improvement and you should at least get one for the free amenity uh, in every city that you have. Let's now talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of the newly changed Wilfred and the Canadians in Civilization VI. So as far as the strengths are concerned, there are, well, there's two that I'm going to list here, but there's three that I'm really going to talk about. The first one is the now really insanely strong ability to make national parks. So the fact that the Mountie is now cheaper and also has an additional national park charge means that you pretty much have unlimited charges to build national parks. You're really never going to be limited by anything. It also frees you up from really having to invest heavily in faith in the early game, which is something that's really nice. But as I mentioned, you practically have unlimited national parks so long as you have the land for it. So this is easily one of the best strengths of Canada. The other thing that I'm not going to list but I'm going to talk about is that this then allows you to get a ton of extra diplomatic favor generation because you'll have so much tourism for all these national parks and having a lot of diplomatic favor in the late game like that means that you're probably going to be able to dominate the World Congress and get plenty of diplomatic victory points. So this national park and, diplom uh, and diplomacy combo here is definitely the strongest part of Canada and it does make them really good for both of those victory types. The other big strength of Canada is that they are very safe in the early game due to the uh, fact that nobody can declare a surprise war on you. This means that at bare minimum you're going to have at least a few turns after somebody denounces you in order to prepare for a war. You're not going to have to worry about randomly getting surprise ward and killed early on. So that does make them quite safe and I mean I guess that carries out through the uh, through the rest of the game as well. But on Deity this is most of an issue on uh, in, the, in the very first like I don't know 30 or so turns. So... The fact that you can't get the uh, surprise war declared on you is very nice. As far as weaknesses are concerned for Canada, I had one before and I still have one, but it's a different one. So previously when I did the original Leader Spotlight, I had mentioned the fact that Tundra still sucks. That's not the case anymore. That issue has been solved. The new weakness now that, I mean, it's not really, it was still a weakness before, but I just didn't talk about it, was that you really don't have any bonuses towards advancing through the tech and civic tree. This isn't a huge problem because if you're playing either culture or diplomatic victory, then you don't necessarily need to get through those trees very fast in order to win either of those victory types. But it is a pain if you want to get certain wonders like getting to Statue of Liberty or just, you know, being able to fight in wars. If somebody does attack you, then you might be a little bit behind on units. Uh, the fact that you don't get any really science or culture yield until later on does is a little bit of a weakness for Canada. But this one, as I mentioned, doesn't really matter based on the play style that you can go for them. But it is is a weakness nonetheless. And now it is that time to give Canada their tier rankings. So if you're new to the series, all that you need to know here is that these go on the standard tier ranking scale with S tier being the highest, followed by A, B, C, D, and F. So Domination Victory is up next, and I think that Canada still was going to deserve a D in Domination Victory. So the bad thing here, obviously, is that one, you cannot conquer city-states, which makes it hard to expand if you want to take one of those over to, you know, kind of start your Domination Snowball. And two, you, can't declare, uh, you cannot declare Surprise Wars, which means that you're going to have a bad time, you know, trying to do that. On top of that, you really have no bonuses towards anything with Domination, so definitely avoid Domination Victory as Canada, and that's why they deserve the D here. Science Victory is up next, and I think that they deserve a C. I mean, you can just turtle and play for a Science Victory if you really want, but they don't get any bonus to Science Yield. They do actually at least have some, you know, merit in the fact that now their tiles aren't as bad as before, so you can at least still get decent production in your cities, but really is no reason for go to, to, to go for a Science Victory on them as, as, unless you want a turtle, but even if you want a turtle, just play Vietnam instead, but uh, that's why they deserve a C in Science. 
Culture Victory is up next, and I definitely think that they deserve an A, and this is pretty much solely because of the fact that the Mountie now has two National Park charges, as I've ranted about a ton already. That's just ridiculously insane. You can get so much tourism out of that. The Ice Hockey Rink also will give you Culture as well, uh, so the reason they're not S tier is just because you don't get any bonuses to Culture Yield for most of the game until you reach that Ice Hockey Rink. Um, so that's kind of what I think limits them a little bit. And then even so, you don't have any bonuses to appeal or anything like that. Uh, or uh, actually, tourism bonuses, something like what uh, Bull Moose Teddy has. So that is what is limiting them from reaching S tier. But still, the fact that you get the extra tourism from having so many national parks, and you will eventually get tourism from your ice hockey rinks as well once you reach flight, makes them a good culture sieve and well-deserving of the A. Religious Victory is up next, and I think they deserve a C. Pretty much the same thing as Science Victory here. There really isn't any reason to go for a Religious Victory, but unlike Domination Victory, there's nothing that's really a major downside for them, so for that reason, I think that they deserve the C. Diplomatic Victory is up next, and I definitely think that they deserve the S here, so there aren't that many Diplomatic Civs in the game, so it's not entirely difficult to become an S-tier Civ, but just the fact that you can get so much extra Diplomatic Favor from generating tourism is really good, and you can generally get more Diplomatic Favor than probably anybody else in the game, maybe with the exception of someone like, honestly, even Tamar now, or Rough Rider Teddy, both of them are able to generate a good amount of Diplomatic Favor, but... Uh, still, Wilfred is one of the best diplomatic civs. The fact that you won't be at war too much, you get extra diplomatic favor from emergencies and uh, scored competitions, and you also get it from tourism, means that you will have plenty of diplomatic power to be able to control the World Congress, so well deserving of the S tier ranking in Diplomatic Victory. And now for his overall ranking, I definitely think that Wilfred deserves an A. So whenever I originally gave him a ranking, I believe that I had him in D tier. So he has he has had quite the turnaround going from D tier all the way up to A tier. But uh, the various yield bonuses that they've given to the Tundra Tiles as Wilfred honestly have just helped him out so much. It makes it so much less of a slog to play as him. The fact that the Mountie now gets extra charges as well has just helped him out even a little bit more, and as I've mentioned, he has a very clear and good play style of just playing this relatively turtly sieve that just, you know, expands into the Tundra, gets a ton of national parks, and then can either go for culture victory or diplomatic victory. It's very well defined, and he does it very well, so for that reason, I think that he deserves the A. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoyed the video feel free to like, if not feel free to dislike, if you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching. And goodbye.